Afros. Welcome to Dynasty Saturday with the Fantasy Football Semi-Pros. What I'm up? Brandon, with me is Ryan. What Ryan, up? how are you today? What up? What up? I haven't had any caffeine, so let's see how this goes. We'll see how this goes indeed. Hopefully this is <clears throat> this episode won't be too long. Maybe um, half hour. Half hour, 45 minutes, I'm guessing. So, the plan is here, we're going to talk about three players that we're each looking to buy in Dynasty. And three players we're looking to sell. And we're going to focus more on the super flex side of things. Because yeah. it seems like most <clears throat> Dynasty Leagues have moved, if not started, as super flex leagues. Before we do that, interesting game on Thursday. He had Kyler Murray. and Did you know the funniest thing I've seen from that? Apparently A.J. Green retired mid-play. Yeah, apparently... God, man, my cousin tried to tell me last night that, oh, no, that was Murray's fault. It wasn't A.J. Green's fault. And I was like, look at the other side of the field. All three receivers were running routes. Do you have the height advantage on this corner over here all by yourself? You have the field advantage. You have, he had outside leverage from the corner. Or, sorry, inside leverage on the corner. You had that whole entire sideline to work with. Murray's under pressure. He's a little bit hurt. Get the ball out to the guy, the big tall guy with a great wingspan. That can juggle. Let's just let's not even let's not even turn around and look for the ball, AJ Green. How about that? Glad you're ruining somebody else's season besides Cincinnati's. I mean, he had a few good years here, but man, that was bad. Yeah, that was bad. I I don't care which which way. I mean, Rondell Moore didn't help the team at all. My my guy. I mean, fumbles a punt return, well muffs it. And then <laughs> leads to an interception right through his friggin' hands. I that was just a bad game. I, I think the Cardinals played the worst game of the season, and they were just out. Well, there. being undefeated, and we we talked about it. It wouldn't surprise if this is a game that Rodgers went out and won out spite. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, he didn't. Rodgers didn't play a terrible game, but he didn't play. The game everybody thought he did, but I mean that defense, the Packers defense, really stepped up and answered the bell. So. Yep. So before we get in, we just kind of want to start talking about what are our pl- what are our plans for this next week. Uh, it's gonna be busy. It, it is gonna be a little bit busy. Uh, Monday we're gonna have our normal um, preview show. Thursday, or sorry, Re- Monday's yeah. our recap. Thursday's our preview, mm-hmm. and then we're gonna have another Dynasty Saturday next Saturday. Uh, that one we're actually gonna be talking about prospect prospects, Ryan's rankings. I'll throw some input on those as well. I have a lot of work to do this week on that. <laughs> yeah, and I'll, I'll help with that too. But nah, I mean, I gotta do the doc and everything. I know it like just takes help. forever because I haven't. I don't think I've updated it since week five, and we're in what week nine right now. Getting ready to start week eight. Oof, well, they're playing right now. Oof, yeah. Too. So we, I mean, right now we're missing out on some college games, but not a big deal. Uh, this is actually some of the fun stuff that we're going to talk about. Yeah, that's what I like. Because one of the best things about fantasy football. And I definitely say dynasty fantasy football mm-hmm. is trades. Yes, yes, it, I love trades. I've always found it harder to trade in keeper redraft. and keeper and redraft leagues and dynasty. And I think it's because dynasty there's so many picks involved. You're set with a team for a long period of time. Yeah. So Ryan, we'll go ahead and jump in. These, All right. These are the guys that you might not be considering that they are the. These guys are not the best in the nation. These aren't the best in the nation, but these are the guys that you're looking to buy. They can probably help you win your league. So, I think undeniably. Mm-hmm. So, Ryan, who was your first buy on this? A lot, of, you know, I, I put a lot of thought into this number one. <clears throat> this number one buy, uh, Barbara threw this curveball on me this morning, saying we're going to focus on the dynasty side of it, and I'm well, sticking with it. it we all, we were always going to stick on the dynasty. Well, sorry, side. My, well, you meant Superflex. Yeah, I mean. I'm still sticking with my guy right here. He's the 13th best running back, uh, fantasy football wise. James Robinson. A lot of people are gonna say, "Hey, but what about when Travis Etienne comes back?" Look, what if? What if this? What if that? 
right now, James Robinson can potentially he, – he's going to help you win this league. A uh, couple injuries to the wide receivers over there. And uh, DJ Chark's gone for the season, right? For yes, the Jaguars. DJ Chark's done for the year. I mean, James Robinson has been their best, most solid player on offense all season long. Um, he's going to get his touches. He's going to get – He's gonna get a couple of targets here and there throughout the game. Um, he's he's gonna get the job done for you, and he's not an Alvin Kamara or a Derrick Henry type. Maybe not even a Jonathan Taylor type, but he he's pretty solid for at least 16, 17 points a week, and, and that's a big difference, especially mm -hmm. in the in the deep uh, super flex leagues uh, where you have multiple flex positions. Um, I think he is a great buy. And you're right. What about Travis Etienne? What? So, and then We're Ryan does bring up him. that good point. Well, you're not going to see Travis Etienne for this not year this either. year, but it's going to be next year. But I think Robinson has solidified his spot in this offense. And so this is, all, I think this is a pretty much, if you're a contender this year, buy. Um, a lot of people say, hey, I don't want to mortgage my future for, <clears throat> for a one year rental. Right. Nobody but does. In the end. The goal of fantasy football, whether it's dynasty, whether it's keeper, whether it's redraft, is to win. Is to win. And just sometimes, win. sometimes just getting that championship one year, yeah. yeah, you might have to rebuild after that. But at some point, almost every dynasty league is going to have to rebuild. Yeah, at some point, uh, whichever <clears> way you spin it. So get your W's now. Get your victories now. Um, and, hey, I mean, 2022 draft class, there's not a lot of quarterbacks, very few running backs that I'm excited about uh, coming into the fantasy world of professional sports. There's some good wide receivers, but the 2022 draft class isn't all that great. So if you need to spend a draft pick for James Robinson, I would say do it. I, I will say, yeah, this 22 draft class is not the elite talent, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. There's, as a, we thought. there's a few guys that I have my eyes on that I want to, mm. I, I want to see and look at the numbers and try to watch them a little bit more. And once the season's over and everything, and I can go in and, just YouTube these people or NFL type in videos dot com or whatever it is and watch these games. I, I think it'll be a lot better. Yep. So what what's the price tag? Like what's the most that you'd look to spend on him? Um, right now for Robinson, uh again, he, he's not elite. So that that's a good question. I, I would pay <clears throat> I don't I mean, think I don't think one first is getting it done. No, one first isn't going to get it done for James Robinson. But I mean, you got to give a little to get a little. If you can get, if you can, if you have a young guy that you're, that that, I mean, you got to know, man. You got to learn your league. Who who's, whoever has Robinson in your league, what are they looking for? Just talk to him. Be like, hey, I'm interested in Robinson. I'm willing to offer a first rounder for 2022. I would stay away from 2023. Don't 2022 first, and I'm willing to add a little uh, add a little depth to your team with a running back. But obviously, it's not going to be an Alvin Kamara or or whoever. Uh, but I think you got to go first first rounder and maybe another young player um, if they're interested in one of those guys. I think you got to pull the trigger, especially this year and maybe next year. He might have. I think he's still going to have value next year, so it won't be a, a huge loss if you give up a Michael Carter or Michael Carter. And, and we saw, I thought when Michael P. Ryan was going to be the next best thing in New York, <laughs> but he's not even, is he even practicing? Is he even playing? I don't even know. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, you got to go with what's proven. So if somebody's high on somebody and you're sitting there thinking, oh, well, they got a good point, pull the trigger because James Robinson is proven. All right, so. My question is, uh, would you trade maybe James Robinson uh, 2022 first, which is probably going to be a late first at that, and Chase Claypool for shit. So, sorry, a 2022 first and Chase, Chase Claypool for Robinson. Because you I, mentioned a young player. I mean, I would consider it. Um, <clears throat> it right now, my personally, my... Dynasty team is lacking wider or lacking running back depth. Um, I have a host of good young wide receivers, and if Chase Claypool's in my flex, yeah, I'm, to get James Robinson, yeah. I mean, 
I'm looking at this as I have at least one really good running back, and Robinson's going to be either my RB2 or in a flex position. Fair. Right? Yeah. That's why he's a buy. He's not your – he's probably not high on anybody's radar. Yeah. And, and I will <clears> say, <throat> a trade calculators may not show that as a good trade, which you're not going to rely on those solely. No, but, but that it, gives you kind of a good starting if, area. If you have a bad feeling and you go in there and you type in the numbers and it doesn't look right, there's a reason for it, mm-hmm. you, and you just got to go with it. Like, I was actually just looking at one, and James uh, James Robinson, he's valued about 1,075 points. That's it. Whereas the total for a 2022 first in Claypool is about 4,000. But What? Sometimes you gotta look at it this way: running backs are they're they're hard to get, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so this might be one where you consider, hey, I'm gonna take the shot on the running back. Yeah, I think Robinson's gonna be there. He, I think he has at least another year <clears throat> in in Jacksonville, but. I agree, man. It's hard to tell the shelf life of the running back. So I just wanted to go over some trades that we've kind of seen come through for Robinson lately. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, So James James Robinson for Cole Beasley, Odo Beckham Jr., Tyrod Taylor, Darius Slayton in the 22 second. I would trade all that for James Robinson in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, James Robinson for a 22 first and a 23 third. Okay, I can see that. I would like to keep my 23s, though. It's a third. In the end, a third can be... You can get a third back pretty easily. Is it a late third or an early third? That's a, that's it, a question. And yeah, thirds, it's hard to tell. Thirds are just start throws anyways. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, James Whoa. Robinson and Elijah Mitchell for Chuba Hubbard, a 22 first and a 23 third. That, I would take that James Robinson side, probably. Yeah, you got Elijah Mitchell, too. Yeah. Uh... James Robinson, Dallas Goddard for a 23 first, a 22 third, or 23 third, a 22 first, and Michael Carter. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then James Robinson for a 22 second, or James Robinson in a 22 second for Miles Gaskin, Cleo Herbert, and Devonta Smith. Yeah. I'm a little more hesitant on that side because I think I'd rather Devonta Smith. Yeah, I think wide receivers have a longer shelf life <laughs> in the NFL. And then one more I saw, you mentioned Michael Carter. James Robinson for Michael Carter in a 2022 second. I think they got a really good price. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, in, the, in the end, I think the values kind of match up if you're looking at a trade calculator. Mm-hmm. Some player, or some people are only going to do a trade if it shows that they're winning on a trade calculator. Right, right. So, and that's where we kind of talk about know your league. Mm-hmm. All right, anything else you want to put in on James Robinson? No, nah, I think I've I've been trying to finagle some ideas <laughs> myself. I just can't find any reasonable cause to push the send button. If that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so my first buy, I went with Javante Williams, another running back. Mm-hmm. He's young. He's young, and right now, if you get a manager who's kind of like uh, that rosters Javante Williams, and they're not fully focused. They may be more seeing his points per game and not seeing what he's done on the field. Yeah, and this might be a good time to buy Javante because he's still splitting time with Melvin Gordon. And next year, that might not be the case. Yeah, I think the the Broncos have an out on Melvin Gordon based mm-hmm. off how his contract is for next year. Which I like Melvin Gordon, but... Which yeah, Williams looks good. Yeah, uh, really today good. I kind of, I was listening to something and somebody kind of compared him, like the way he runs is kind of like Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> He's gonna run through you. He has one big highlight play almost every week. Hold my <laughs> <laughs> beast <Bishmo. laughs> Did you hear what what uh Marshawn Lynch did when he went on the Manning cast on Monday? No. He came on and he said. Yeah, I just took two shots of Hennessy before I got on. <laughs> Classic Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? He goes back to the hood and hands out Thanksgiving Day oh, cookies yeah. and food to the whole. I love it, man. He... Marshawn Lynch is a great guy, but I digress. Back oh, to I, I just kind of wanted to bring that up. Yeah, Javante Williams, this is going to be the time that you can try to buy. Yeah. Yep. Um, the Broncos, their one, their one defense schedule, it gets a lot better from here. 
And if Gordon goes down and Javante gets the work to himself where they start increasing this workload for him, Mm -hmm. it's going to be very, very hard to buy Javante Williams. Uh, So, I mean, really, I'd be willing to definitely give up a mid to late first and plus for him. Yeah. That's true. <clears throat> and he not only is he running the ball well, he's catching the ball. Yeah, I mean, he's got great PPR value. I, I think Gordon does as well. He's just, they're just splitting time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, it's dead even. Uh huh. So, some trades that I've been seeing for John, or that I see for Javante Williams. Uh, Javante Williams for Michael Pittman Jr. in a 23 second. I would take that in a heartbeat. Yeah, sorry, I'm looking over your shoulder. You're fine. Uh, Alvin Kamara, a 22 first, or Alvin Kamara for a 24 first, a 22 first, and a Javante Williams. I want, wow. I want that Javante Williams side. Boy. Unless I'm an absolute contender, I'm going for that Javante Williams. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a tough one for me. I like having Kamara. It <laughs> might be time to sell. And so running backs, you're usually looking at a three to three five. to four. Yeah, three to four year window. I would say three to five. It well, more often than not, it's a it's probably a two to three year window. But you have those outliers like a Kamara, like Henry's a Derrick Henry. Still out there. <laughs> I think this is his fifth year. I think it's both Kamara and Derrick Henry's fifth year. Anyway. Um, let's see, some others. Jeez. Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams for Jerry Judy, Elijah Moore, and Ramonde, uh, Ramondre Stevenson. I I still, I think I prefer the Javante Williams side of that. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, Javante Williams for Gaskins, a 23 second, a 23, or two 23 seconds, and Rashad Bateman. Definitely Javante Williams. Yep. Yeah. And then Javante Williams for Josh Jacobs in a 2022 20, second. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then just because this one's piquing my interest, Derrick Henry for a 23 first, a 22 second, and Javante Williams. What? That might be one where somebody needs to win now and somebody's looking to rebuild. Why would you get rid of Henry? Now, I will say this probably isn't the Javante Williams buy it's you're probably not competing right now i guess that's that's fair. you're looking for the future you're about a year or two off mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right and so ryan do you want to go over your second <clears throat> yeah man my second buy is uh brandon cooks now this is a risky play and i made it i made it i i, I offered <laughs> up juju smith schuster for brandon cooks <clears throat> um the league went absolutely insane um at that time, I think it was week three or so, uh, Brandon Cooks was ranked the number six wide receiver. He's he's not, now the 19th. Yeah, he's not that high. Uh, but I got rid of Juju. I had a lot of shares, so to speak, of Juju Smith-Schuster in multiple <laughs> leagues, and I just needed to get rid of him. Uh, I didn't want shares anymore. Um, so I did it. The league went absolutely nuts. Like Everybody knows Brandon Cooks is... Up there in age, mm-hmm. uh, it's just a struggling, struggling offense. Yeah, I mean Brandon Cooks <clears throat> is twenty eight. <clears throat> uh, but I mean, I the the league went so insane that I ended up just sending the dude a second, a twenty twenty two second as well. And I was like, whatever, guys, you just need to. It's not, it's not as lopsided as y'all think. And Trey calculator, calculators even said, person getting juju was winning by like one hundred fifty six percent. It was insane, and nobody wanted to listen to reason. Uh, but that's fine. Um, I don't really care. I like Brandon Cooks because of these of these reasons. A, there are no targets <laughs> in Houston. Uh, Danny Amendola is back. Uh, that could take a little bit of attention away from Brandon Cooks, but maybe not. But even with Brandon Cooks being the only real threat in Houston, he's still putting up pretty good points. Um He's had a couple of bad weeks, and Tyrod Taylor's expected back soon. Yeah, I mean, the, the, he's been he's had a couple of bad weeks, and I think you're going to get that stretch with anybody. I had that with C.D. Lamb. <clears throat> uh, just luckily, Brandon Cooks was doing okay, but when C.D. Lamb was in his slump, but Brandon Cooks is getting Tyrod Taylor back. I think week nine they said uh, they potentially, ex- yeah. They they expect him to be back and starting week nine, 
and that's a huge boost for Brandon Cooks. Uh, they, I mean, before Tyrod Taylor was hurt, man, they were they were on something. I think I think Cooks had ten targets a game, if not more. Um, but this is somebody I would only I would only go after f- for cheap. Yeah, I, I would say a 2022 second, uh, and, and maybe a couple of players you don't ever plan on playing, uh, just to give them something to put in their roster. His values put definitely probably dropped as this has progressed a little bit, but I think there is upside for him, and that's why I'm saying buy the upside and potential. Even if he goes to another team, he's produced on what four different teams now. I mean, New the Orleans, Saints, Patriots, Patriots, Rams, Rams, yeah, and now Houston. I mean. Yeah, uh, this guy, he's got – he could definitely help you win this – win your league. I think he can definitely help you win your league, especially if, yeah, change of scenery or B, Tyrod Taylor comes back and they just pick up where they left off. Um, and I think he's he's kind of getting to that point. Ryan kind of mentioned the tweet he sent out after the Ingram trade. Mm-hmm. I think he wants out of Houston as well. I, I don't blame him, man. I mean, the, we've heard a lot of reports about how Houston is a second-rate ball club and everything just doesn't really operate how it should, and it just it's really confusing to the players. It's, the culture is just not very great down there in Houston. But uh, the, at the end of the day, I think uh, Cooks is one of those guys he's going to play. And he's going to do his best. He's going to go out there and, and try to get mm-hmm. that next year's deal somewhere else. All right. So we'll look for some trades that involve Brandon Cooks. So I'm at most going about a week back on any of these. That's, yeah. That's so we get some relative recent value. Right. So Brandon Cooks for Nelson Aguilar in a 2022 second. Oh, yeah. I would do that. Yeah. Allen Robinson for Brandon Cooks, a 2022 third and a 2022 fourth. Oh yeah, if you're getting cooks and you're getting all those those picks, huh? It, yeah. <laughs> I think if you need a receiver this year, Cooks is the answer. I think yes. Robinson, he's gonna be better in the future. Oh, for sure. Uh especially once he's on either a new team or Chicago has a new coach. Mm-hmm. Uh Brandon Cooks for Daryl Williams in a twenty twenty two third. Yeah, I'm I'd taking take that. Cooks in a heartbeat. Uh Brandon Cooks, a twenty three first and Travis Etienne. For Aaron Jones and LaVisca Chenault. I think I want the Aaron Jones side of that. Wait, what, what? Brandon Cooks, 23 first. And Travis Etienne. For Aaron Jones and LaVisca Chenault. Hmm. You're getting a better running back and a younger receiver. I think I would take the other side on that one. Yeah, quite <clears> possibly. Um, the, or Derek Carr and Brandon Cooks for Baker Mayfield, Deontay Johnson, and Kadarius Toney. I think I want the Tony side. I agree there. But it also depends on where your team's sitting. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm RB heavy in our in our redraft. I could use some help at wide receiver, but <laughs> Well, these aren't redraft. Right, teams. I know, but you know, and I'm pretty uh, wide receiver heavy in our dynasty league, so Allen Robinson for Brandon Cooks in a 2022 fourth. Mm-hmm. Uh whew, Chris Godwin and Van Jefferson for Cooks and Claypool. And Michael Carter for uh, Brandon Cooks and Tyrod Taylor. Interesting. Yeah. I can see all those. There's some <clears> I would <throat> rather have Cooks in, and there's some I'd rather have the other side. Yeah. But I mean, I think in right any now, end, that, that, that tells you it's a good trade. If if you can make it a solid argument for both sides, that definitely tells you it's a good trade. I'm buying Cooks, but I'm buying him low or cheap. Yeah. And I'm I'm hoping these last couple of weeks uh, helps the ma- other opposing manager get rid of him for cheap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a lot of my dynasty buys, I'm looking more long term, but this one he could help you more short term as well. And my next one is Michael Pittman Jr. I almost put him on my on my list. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't because he's one that. I drafted him like crazy. I got yep. him whenever I could. <clears throat> yeah, USC. Yep, out of USC, like he, the way he looked there, mm-hmm. he caught just about anything that came his way. Yeah, and he's starting to show what he can do as a number one receiver this year. Um, like I said, this is both uh, I think a long term if you're rebuilding, <clears throat> or even if you absolutely need a receiver. Uh, right now, Pittman is. Sorry. No, you're fine. 
sleeper decided he wanted to load or reload. That, that'll happen, <laughs> dude. That'll happen. And then not work for me. There we go. Right now, Michael Pittman, he's wide receiver 21 in the year. Now, he's not that wide receiver one overall yet, but Dynasty's not all about having that number one receiver. No, you just need the right mix of, of guys, mm -hmm. really. That's all it and takes. Pittman, he's currently 24 years old. Mm -hmm. He could have up to 10 years still left to play. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm not saying that's a guaranteed 10 years. Of production. Yep. But wide receivers, we mentioned, their time frame, it's a lot longer than, than oh, running, back, running backs. Yeah. And... Definitely, I, when I when I go to draft a team, I try to draft younger, more high upside wide receivers. Like, I'll sprinkle in some <clears throat> running backs early on. But super flex leagues, I'm going quarterback, and I'm going wide receiver early. Yeah. And it helped me win one last year. And in our dying league that we started last year, I've been competitive. And it's because my receivers keep me in everything. Yeah, I went running back heavy with... <laughs> quarterbacks and then focus on wide receivers later and I I did really well last year um, but you're finding that you're struggling a little bit this year I mean my my core is Kyler Murray Alvin Kamara Derrick Henry and I traded off some running backs for uh, Josh Jacobs no somewhere. I have Jacobs yeah I traded him oh okay I drafted yeah, I him what you're saying in now. the fifth round last year <laughs> <laughs> how he made it back there I don't know but anyway yeah no because um, Dynasty it was super flex so you're going quarterback early yeah that's true I don't know. Um, Pittman, yeah, man, he's good. Uh, so some trades I've been uh, that I see going out for Pittman. Michael Pittman in the twenty three second for Javante Williams. Man, that one. <laughs> I don't know what side I want. <laughs> um, uh, I'll take the wide receiver on that one. Jalen Waddle for Michael Pittman Jr. in a twenty two second. Okay. That one's actually pretty even. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that one's not going to go over. And there's, there's some of these what they're like ten moving pieces. I can't keep up. Mike Evans and Michael Pittman Jr. for Stephon Diggs. I would. I don't I wanna, know that I would. Do, I don't know how to do that for Diggs. I would want to be on. I want. I want Evans and Pittman though. Yeah. Uh, Michael Pittman Jr. in a twenty-three second for Devonta Smith. Okay. I think I prefer the Pittman Jr. side. Yeah, you're getting the. Especially if I'm looking to win this year. Yeah. Michael Pittman Jr. for a 22 fifth? Yeah, that's a trade offer you're not getting. Yeah. Well, that was that's... somebody taking advantage of someone there. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 22 second and 23 third and Terrace Marshall Jr. for Pittman. I'm not sold on Marshall. Not yet. So I, mean, I think he's... I would take Pittman. Marshall's young and he's playing with a quarterback who's seeing ghosts. But so it's not from... really fair. What I can see here. You might be able to get Pittman for like a 22 second and a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And a second? You who, can recuperate a second. Who has Pittman in our in our dynasty? Do you? I think it's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. I can't buy from the guy that wants to buy him. <laughs> hey, anybody's oh, uh, available for the right price. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not overpaying you for Pittman. Uh, but, Plus, I have pretty good wide receivers. Yeah. Especially once uh, Michael Thomas comes off the pup list. Yeah, I mean, my, I'll have Michael Thomas, list. Kadarius, Tony. Uh, shoot, who are my other guys? Brandon Cooks, T. Higgins. It's not a bad wide no. receiver group. And, I mean, like I was saying, though, a second, you can recuperate a second pretty easily. I don't have a second. And even in 22, I'd be happy to give up that second. Well, I don't have a 22 second or well, a 23 second. All I have is thirds. <laughs> In, Thirds and first. Yeah. In 22, like, like, we, like we said, there's going to be some value, but I think Pittman's better than most of the wide receivers that would be coming out that you would get in the second. No, you're, <clears> yeah, you're absolutely right, unless it's Drake London. What? I don't know that he's going to drop to a second. Uh, there's a chance in a super flex league he could. Could. All right, so Ryan, you're number three. This is going to come as a shocker for people. Um, Mostly this, because he's old. <laughs> he's not... That old? I think he's 36 years old. That's old. For a QB? Yes, that's old for a QB. Ah, uh, well, he is right now... But the, we'll check to see how old The number 20 
uh, QB in fantasy football, Matt Ryan. Uh, he off to a rough start this season. I yeah, think he's thirty six. He's got a few more years. Possibly, two, yeah, two or three. Maybe, Possibly, maybe, maybe. Go get you a young guy in the draft, whatever. But Matt Ryan, hey, I, I'm offering up a second in a super. Well, if it's a super flex league, you might have to give up a first. You probably have to give up for any quarterback. Yeah, in that's a super flex worth league, it, you probably have to give up a first, especially for the number twenty QB overall. Look, man, Matt Ryan's good. Um, he's done it year after year. Off to a rough start this year. Um, this is another one that I would say he is a, only if you're a contender. Yes. This isn't if you're rebuilding. No, no, definitely not a rebuild. I mean, like we just mentioned his age, 36 years old. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here with Kyler Murray and Taylor Heineke as my quarterbacks. Uh, Matt Ryan for a fair price, not overpaying for Matt Ryan. Um, but, yeah, it, I, I think a 2022 first is a fair price. I would hold off on a 2023 first for Matt Ryan personally. I wouldn't give that up if you have it. Um, but Matt Ryan's going to help you compete this year. Um, let me go back and just kind of take a peek at, at his stats here. Uh, I'm just going to go week by week by the numbers. I mean, started off bad, 12, 12 points in week one, 31 in week two, 25 week three, 40 week four, 33 in week five, by week 28. Uh, in week seven. So he, he's going to help you compete, especially in a super flex league where you can start two QBs. Um, I, I mean, at most, at most, I'm giving up a 2022 first round pick for Matt Ryan. And I wouldn't give up an early, like, most likely, if you're a contender, you're not giving up an early one. Right. You're give not going to have your, it unless you're lucky your with a trade. One. Yeah, give up a late first. Uh, so some trades... Some trades I'm seeing for Matt Ryan out there. Alex Collins and Robert Woods for Matt Ryan. I wouldn't have given that up. If I need a quarterback and uh, I'm competing and I have yeah, a chance to win, yeah. That's true. We don't know these guys' rosters and what they <clears throat> look like. Like like I said, man, I'm really weak at running back. Yeah. And <laughs> Everything in here is it's in a vacuum pretty much. Who am I going to play when Derrick Henry goes on his bye week? I have no idea. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo in a 2022 first for Matt Ryan in a 23 second. Okay. I mean, Garoppolo is a, a rental there, so I don't have an issue with that. No. That's basically saying you're paying a second for Garoppolo and a first for her. You're getting a first for Ryan. Mm-hmm. Giving up a first. Yeah. Uh, Matt Ryan and Cleo Herbert for Debo Samuel. Uh... I'd make that trade if I needed it. Yeah, I would. I would like the Cleo Herbert and Matt Ryan side. Uh, Twenty-two first and Justin Fields for Matt Ryan and Tua Tagovailoa. What? Whew. What? What? It could be rebuilding. Rebuilding versus. I. Contender. Yes. Matt Ryan for a twenty-two second. Or two twenty-two seconds. Okay. Matt Ryan for a twenty-two first. So a like first said, could potentially get it done for Matt Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's going to be harder to do, but it's doable. All right. So, my last buy on here. Once again, mine's... It's not going to be someone that's going to help you this year. This is if you're a rebuilder. And mine is a tight end, Cole Komet. <clears throat> He's starting to show some flashes of what he can do. But tight ends don't typically break out until year three at the earliest. So tight ends, unless you have a really good one, you're kind of dark going. And yeah, yeah. This this off season was really the first off season that Komet had where he could focus solely on football because he was a baseball player too at Notre Dame. Yeah, that's true. And I didn't know that. So, <clears throat> I mean, you gotta think Justin Fields is only gonna get better. Hopefully. Matt Nagy, he's either gone or he... Well, the Bears have ruled out Matt Nagy this Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> That's why falls. I picked them to win. The um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but they've had Jimmy Graham there, and Cole Komet, at the end of last year, started overtaking Jimmy Graham, a.k.a. Jimmy <clears throat> Grandpa. Yeah, pretty much. I, I Hey, man. I don't have anything against Cole Komet, but 
I, I just, you're right. Future down I, the yeah, road. And this is a future down the road type of thing. Cause when they get a quarterback deck. Once a tight end breaks out, they are hard to trade for. Because everybody wants And to if you don't draft a tight end, you may never get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I like his athletic abilities. Like, he is an athletic tight end. He's not just sit in there, block. He is the athletic guy that could be split out more. No, you're right. You're right. Like, a, almost like a... Kind of like what Pitts is doing right now yeah, or Gusecki. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Gusecki, man, he's running routes like a wide receiver. And then, <laughs> potentially, there's no Allen Robinson in Chicago next year. That's true. That could just leave him and Darnell Mooney. Wow, what an offense. <laughs> So, some trades that we're seeing for Cole Komet. Cole Komet and Trey Lance from Mac Jones. I'm not sure I'd make that trade for Mac Jones. But if you're getting the Komet and Lance side. Mac Van. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was really slow on that one. AJ Brown for Mike Evans and Cole Komet. Yes. And honestly, like if you're looking at the trade calculator numbers, Mike Evans plus Cole Komet does not equal AJ Brown. So, tight ends, especially in the tight end premium. Yeah. They hold more weight. Will Fuller straight up for Cole Komet. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yes. Marquez yes. Callaway for Cole Komet. Yes. Cedric Wilson in a 22 third for Cole Komet. Yes. Cole Komet in a 24 third for a 24 second and Tommy Tremble. Yes. So, Cole Komet, <laughs> not only is I think he's going to get better, but you can buy him for you the cheap. You can right buy now. him so cheap. Look at this next trade, the Gusecki one. Mike Gusecki in a 22 fourth for Komet, a 22 third and a 22 second. Yeah, man. Whoever got Komet got a huge... Cole Komet for a 24 second. Okay. That's three years down the road. Yeah. You can recoup that second <laughs> at some point. Well, look at this big one. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> read it, read it, read it. Just this one? If, yeah, let's see if anybody can keep up with all this. This is insane. So, Alvin Kamara, Henry Ruggs, JBB, Joe, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. Cole Komet and A.J. Dillon. This is where it gets nuts, guys. For Robbie Anderson, Saquon, Tom Brady, Brandon Cooks, Kareem Hunt, and Mac Jones. Mac Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> so, I mean, Cole Komet's somebody that you can get on the cheap. And, yeah, if you have the roster spot or if you're rebuilding, he's definitely a good stash. Yeah. Sorry, my wife is running to the grocery. <laughs> I don't think she's going to run. She's more likely to drive. On a Saturday, uh, we need more candy. Sorry. I have some in my car for tomorrow, too. Okay, cool. It's only like a bag, but... Sorry, guys. You're welcome for the thrilling podcasting. Well, so that kind of wraps up, wraps up our buys. Uh, if you guys have any, uh, if you guys have anything, anybody that you think could buy, reply to us on our on our fantasy or on our social medias. Mm-hmm. We're always listening to see like, okay, who do you guys think are a buy, or what do you think about our buy options on here? Yeah, let us know. I mean, I'm not the greatest at this <clears throat> thing. Uh... We're still learning. We're still trying to figure things out as well. I accidentally rebuilt my team without my first round <laughs> pick for 2022. Which uh, I'm not I'm not too upset about I get that first round pick. Because it's not a it's not a great draft class. I think there's some guys in there I really want. I might try to start trading for 2023 so. His first round pick is all probably probably going to be the number 1 overall. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm willing to take I'm I actually rebuilt last year, so I have a good group of wide receivers. I'm sitting with Josh Jacobs and and Javante Williams there too. I'm like a running back or two away, so I, I'm I'm looking for that forward to that. I'm gonna get like a Isaiah Spiller, Brees Hall, or Zach Charbonnet. Yeah. All right. Brian Robinson is the best running back in this <clears throat> class, hands down. We'll see on that one. He's good, but I don't think he's the best. He's but the best. Alabama, it's hard to judge a running back because they break out so late because they have to. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on to cells. Ryan, do you want to go over your first dynasty cell? My first dynasty cell right now is Carson Wentz. Um, he's played really well uh, these last few weeks when he's been healthy without his ankles being broken. Um, I think you can sell him pretty high. I wouldn't take anything less than a first-round pick for 2022. I, I, I wouldn't take anything less than that. Um, 
And I don't even think that's a whole lot. But, I mean, if you look at it, man, Carson Wentz has been playing really well uh, these last few weeks. So I think you can get more than a first, maybe two firsts, especially in a super flex league. I mean, he's putting up some good numbers, and people might look at that and be like, oh, well, he's starting to come around. And he's getting – he had T.Y. Hilton back for a week, and then he was hurt, and hopefully T.Y. Hilton's back for him again. Uh, yeah, man, I think Carson Wentz is somebody to sell um, just because I think you can get more value. Honestly, the thing with Carson Wentz has never been his talent. He's always produced for fancy. It's always just been his health. Right. So you're wondering when the shoe's going to drop. Yeah, me, I, I can't deal with that anxiety with it. <laughs> so. Well, good news is I don't think you have Carson Wentz anywhere. No, I do not. <clears throat> so we'll look at some... Uh, some trades that I went through for Carson Wentz. Wow. We have Wentz for Higby, a 24 first and a 23 third. I wouldn't do that for the late or for like the down the road picks, but Rondell Moore for Carson Wentz and a 22 third. Wow. What? Yeah, we can just throw that trade out. That's a terrible trade. Both <clears throat> sides. Neither one of them wins that trade. I think the person who got Wentz did. Well, but. yeah. But yeah, that was a bad one. <laughs> um, Went a 24 first, a 22 second, and a 22 first for Russell Wilson. Uh, um, I might have a bad sell here. <laughs> Daryl Henderson for James Conner and Carson Wentz. It, it kind of looks like here people aren't really valuing Carson Wentz. Yeah, they're selling him. Uh, Carson Wentz for and a 23 third for Baker Mayfield. Like, if you can package something like that for somebody who's going to be a longer-term QB, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. But right now, Baker's dealing with a shoulder injury. Yeah, stay away from the zone. What? Carson Wentz for T. Higgins. Okay. I mean, if you can get that, yes, I would take that as long as you're good at quarterback. And that's what I'm saying. Sell Carson Wentz. But <clears throat> this might not be the time to sell Carson Wentz. Yeah, maybe give it a week. See if he stays healthy. See if... Uh... But at the end of the day, man... It's a super flex league, and if you need a quarterback, you need a quarter. If somebody needs a quarterback, they're gonna need a quarterback. So my right. next, my next or my first sell, <laughs> I'm also going the quarterback route. And I just noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and then our our twos are both the same position group. Uh, mine though, this is a quarterback that if you're watching him. You're worried. You're worried the whole time. But if you just look at the score, like his fantasy points at the end of the game, like, okay, that's fine. It's the garbage man. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts! <laughs> this guy, I don't know that he lost this year. Mm -hmm. He's he's not winning games in Philadelphia. No. He cannot throw. Not as well. He's getting the points with his legs. Mm -hmm. There's already rumbling that Gardner Minshew, Mr. Mustache, and Jorts. Jorts! He could be taking over just to see what they have. So what are you asking for this guy? The thing is, I'm going to try to sell high, of course. Well, yeah, everybody wants to sell high. You, you probably could. You could possibly sell high for him. See, it keeps saying the stream has ended. Oh, but it is. Sorry, um, I'm going to go turn on the UFC fights. But... Well, you were talking, so I couldn't. But, honestly, if I'm taking a little bit of a loss, I'm willing to do it. So, some trades I'm seeing for Jalen Hurts. Teddy Bridgewater in a 23 first for Jalen Hurts. Okay. That first, maybe ends up being Bryce Young, who yeah. I think is a better quarterback. Yeah. And you get a stopgap for at least a year. Yeah, I think Bryce Young is the... They got to go after in 2023 class. Oh, definitely. DJ Uwe Longway. Blah, 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 DJ U. He's just, he looked bad. Spencer Rattler looks bad. Rattler, he, he was supposed to come out next year, but he's likely, he's not even going to start at Oklahoma. He, uh, he's probably, probably he has to transfer, yeah. Come to Purdue, man. We'll, we'll take you. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'd rather go with who we have. No, it just seems no, just too sporadic. Get some excitement uh, here in West Lafayette. Jalen Hurts for TJ Hawkinson. Hawkinson in the 23 second. What? Dude. Uh, Tua in the 23 first <clears throat> for Higby and Hurts. I would take the Tua side, not in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Tua was actually somebody I considered putting in my buys. 
Yeah, he's not bad. Jalen Hurts in a 22 second for Deshaun Watson in a 22 first. I would take that Watson side even with the potential legal issues in a heartbeat. Yep. Russell Wilson for Jalen Hurts in a 22 second. Oh, yeah. I'm not a fan of Russell Wilson, but I would take that. Yep. Uh, Jalen Hurts for A.J. Green, Tyrod Taylor, a 22 first and a 22 fourth. That's yeah. one hell of a way to sell Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Jalen Hurts for Brandon Cooks, a 22 second, and Rondell Moore. Okay. And here's another one that I like. Jalen Hurts in a 22 first for Dak Prescott in a 22 third. If you can package something like that to get an upgraded quarterback, yeah, man. do it in a heartbeat. I wish I played with some of these people. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Hurts for Christian Kirk, Baker Mayfield, Jalen Rager, 22 third, and a 23 third. What? So you can get quite a bit out there for Jalen Hurts right now. Sell. Or even Jalen Hurts Plus, and you can upgrade. Sell. 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 All right, so Ryan, you want to talk about your second sell? This is hard, man. This was a hard <clears throat> one, uh, and you know we both. I'm just gonna do a spoiler. We both went tight end for our number two sells. Um, I like this guy. I don't agree with this sell, but I like this guy a lot. But with how hard tight ends are to come by, I think you have to sell Mike Asicki. What? So, and I'll jump to this one just because this trade makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. Uh, he mentioned Mike Kosicki. He says, sell. Yep. This person sold Mike Kosicki for KJ Osborne, a 22 second, and Jamar Chase. This happened two days ago. Somebody clearly has not been watching football. No, I would definitely sell Mike Kosicki for all that. Yeah. But go ahead and talk about why you're selling Gesicki. I'm selling Gesicki because there's a lot of a, a lot of unknowns going on in Miami um, with the whole trade rumors for Watson and Watson never really threw to a tight end and whether he's going to play or not. Whether Aikens trade, was actually very usable under Watson. Whether whether or not it's even going to be done or not, I think I don't think Miami Dolphins fans deserve. Tua, I don't think they deserve Gasecki. I don't think they deserve a whole lot that that coaching that that's going on down there in, in Miami. So I, I just don't know how much longer this production is going to last from Gasecki. It really went up when uh, Brissett was the quarterback. His value really skyrocketed, right? And now that Tua is back, it hasn't really dipped all that much. But I'm just concerned with how this season progresses and with all the negativity surrounding the Miami Dolphins organization, what this could mean. I think you can sell and get a really, really, really good package deal for Mike Gesicki. And I'm actually, like I said, I'm not interested in selling Gesicki. It it would be hard, man. It it would be really hard. Maybe get a young tight end, maybe Friar Muth. If you can get Firemuth for Gasecki plus some other stuff, I think that's a good buy or a good sell. Now with Gasecki, honestly, he may be out of um, Miami next year. Yeah. I think this is a contract year for him. And behind him, I know they just drafted a. I think no, it wasn't Brevin Jordan. They drafted a tight end in the last draft though. Uh, I can't I, think of they got that. Smythe, I think his name, Smithy Smythe. That doesn't out sound there. Right to me. Um, they got they're running. <clears throat> they ran three tight end sets last week. Fair because they're just down. Will Fuller's not out there. Um, Devontae Parker's not out there. And and when all these weapons come back, who knows how Gasicki will do? Look, I'm a huge fan of Gasicki. This Hunter was Long is who they draft. Hunter him. Long, but yeah, yeah they sorry. do have Smythe and Shaheen. But I mean, they're they're. <laughs> When all these weapons that wide receiver come back, <clears throat> all the mouths to feed. I, I, I hate still. to say it. I love Gesicki. I love I love watching the Dolphins play because of Tua and Gesicki. But I'd still I'd rather take the shot and shot on Gesicki. Like I said, tight ends are hard to find. Yeah, you're right. But you and also have somebody who I disagree with selling. That's fine, and I've got good arguments for that one. And that's fine. There's not <laughs> um, a quarterback there, so. <laughs> Uh, but, so, for trades for Mike Kosicki, Mike Kosicki for Damian Williams. 
no, I'm not doing that one. Mike Kosicki for Van Jefferson in a 22 second. Mike Kosicki and Jalen Hurts for Mark Andrews and Aaron Rodgers. Wow. If that's dynasty, that's really this, good. These are dynasty. <laughs> Mike Kosicki for Derek Carr in a 22 third. Okay. Kosicki for okay. Samuels, Edwards, Brian, Curtis Samuel, Brian Edwards in a 24 first. Yes, I'm doing that. I'm getting ready to get uh, Gesicki in a 23 fourth for Hunter Henry in a 23 second. This is kind of the value I wouldn't be surprised here. 22 first for Mike Gesicki, <clears throat> which that actually happened twice. Yep. So, I mean, I'd be willing to spend that first to get Gesicki if I needed a tight end. So, I would go the other way with this and buy him for that price. You had your opportunity. <laughs> Just because I have an opportunity to put them in my buys doesn't mean that I can't buy them for a first, though. <laughs> look, look, and I'm saying man, it, it hurt to say it, but I think you can you can try. If if you're not getting the deal that you really, really want, don't do it. But I think you can get a lot more for Gesicki than his long-term value will be. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to my second sell. And Ryan alluded to it, it is a tight end. And this is going to be a name that's going to shock quite a few people. Yeah, mine shocked a lot of people too. I don't know what your deal is with me. Mine's bigger. <laughs> well, no, it's not. In this case, it is. <laughs> mine's bigger. Uh, but my second sell is George Kittle. George Kittle, he's he's had troubles getting on the field the last two years and staying on the field. Health. Health, yeah. The health is a factor there. He... We don't know what it's going to look like when Trey Lance finally takes the, the field and he's throwing. Because Trey Lance right now, and he could evolve. He's a one-read guy. And Kittle, even with Garoppolo this year, hasn't looked great. And I think right now, you could sell Kittle for a lot. Mm -hmm. And so looking here... Kittle for Kittle and Tre Trevor Lawrence for Lamar Jackson. I'm not sure I would do that, but <clears throat> Kittle Cordero Patterson 22 fourth for Jordan Love 23 first and a 22 first. So okay. basically two first for Kittle, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, Kittle for a 23 first and a 22 first. Dang, you're gonna get at least two firsts. This is quarterback <laughs> type of league. No, I'm mean, not what I'm saying. This oh, is quarterback value. type of value. Uh, Kittle for a 23 first and a 22 second. Kittle and a 22 third for a 23 first, a 22 second, and Jalen Waddle. Heck yeah. Alvin Kamara for Kittle, Robinson, and a 22 first. Yeah, I'd package all that together for... Alvin Kamara? Yeah. Hunter Henry and <coughs> Deontay Johnson for Kittle. George Kittle for Hunter Henry, a 23, or 24 third, and a 23 first. So, I mean, there's value for Kittle there. Yeah. And honestly, if I'm trying to trade Kittle, maybe I'm trying to go Kittle for Hawkinson Plus. So, not completely throwing away my tight end position, but maybe downgrading in name value a little bit. Name value. Because Kittle's name carries a lot of weight. Yes. <clears throat> yes, it does. And here we go. Kittle in the 23 second for Higby in the 22 first. Okay. Kittle for Boyd, Higby, and Singletary. Mm -hmm. Kittle in a 22 first for Mark Andrews in a 23 second. Okay. So, honestly, yeah. you probably need a tight end if you have Kittle. And if you're a contender, you got to go out and make that buy for another tight end. And Kittle's name just brings a lot in itself. A lot of hope. <clears throat> a lot of hope. All right, so Ryan, who is your third and final sell? Again, it pains me to say this. <laughs> it wouldn't pay me at all to sell him. And I have some stock in this guy. Michael yep, Thomas. Yep, I sold you that stock. Uh, Michael Thomas, uh, man, they thought he was going to be back, be back week seven after the bye. It's not looking good. They're hoping week nine, but they're saying it could be even after that. Um the, the upside to selling Michael Thomas right now is that when he does come back, 
the Saints have a they have really they're play, they're gonna go against really favorable matchups defense wise. Um, what I was just happy so it stayed on. Oh. Um, yeah, they're gonna be playing some really weak defenses. The downside is there is none because it's Michael Thomas. You're gonna get what you're gonna get. He's gonna get his target share. Um, it's just I'm saying sell now. Because if you're tired of holding on to him, I completely understand. It's hard. It is absolutely painstaking to have this dude on your bench for the last 16 weeks out of two years. Honestly, you know? I think right now it's hard to sell him. He's more going to be an add-on in a trade. I and guess. Also, you're selling him at his lowest value. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm trying. You mentioned name. People just want the name. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe, and I could be wrong, maybe people are just like, ah, there's more different, there's better people out there. But I think when Thomas gets back, and that's what you're going to have to try to sell, is when he gets back, this offense is going to open up in New Orleans, and he's going to get his target share, he's going to get his looks, he's going to get his opportunities, um, and he's going to help your team win. you gotta, you got to sell that as much as you want, whether you believe it or not. Yeah, so there's two ways you got to make this sell. Either, as he said, you've got to make the case, like, this offense is going to get more opened up with him, right? And he's he's due for a big workload. He's going to have his fo- he's going to be the focal point of the receiving groups. So basically, you got to be the used car salesman here. Yeah, pretty much. Or you wait until he comes back in that first big game. You say, "Hey guys, see, he still has us. Come get your receiver that's going to put you <laughs> in that championship." But then at that point, it's like, why are you trying to sell him? <laughs> at that point, you know what I mean. No, I get it, man. I, I understand there's two ways to play that cell. Um, it's my cell because I just don't know. what, what the, we Nobody knows what the QB situation is going to be in New Orleans. We don't even know if Thomas is going to remain in New Orleans after this year. Uh, Maybe they get an Aaron Rodgers. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Patience is a virtue, I guess. But, yeah, I think you sell Thomas, and, and I, I think you just get rid of your woes and get rid of that. Honestly, I'm probably taking the route where I'm going to try to sell him after he has his first big game. But That's fair. That's uh, fair. So some trades that we're seeing for him, Michael Thomas and Salvin Ahmed <laughs> for Marlon Mack, Denzel Mims, and a 22 first. So basically that's just saying Thomas for a first. Yeah. Um, and a lot of these I'm seeing, he's more of a throw-in. Kenny Gainwell for Michael Thomas, a 22 second, and Elijah Mitchell. Some people just don't know how to play. Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas for Travis Etienne. That's actually one. I would do that. Um, Yeah, you're getting a younger guy in a a position group that's a little harder to read. And so this is another one I mentioned. Michael Thomas being a throw-in. Nick Chubb for Michael Thomas. Dawson Knox. A 24-3rd, a 24-3rd, and 22-2nd. Uh, Michael Thomas for Dan Arnold, Khalif Raymond, Daryl Williams, and a 23 third. I wouldn't sell him for pennies on a dollar like that. No. This one I would take in a heartbeat if I was offered it. Michael Thomas for a 22 first. Yeah, I would. Um, a 22 third, a 23 first, and a 22 first for Michael Thomas and Jalen Hurts. Okay. Yeah, I would sell both of those for that. Uh, Michael Thomas and Van Jefferson for a 22 third, a 22 second, and Darnell Mooney. I'd probably look for a little bit more. Yeah. But Michael Thomas for a 22 third and a 22 second, I'd definitely be looking for more than that. Mm-hmm. Whew, if you could do this one, Cortland Sutton for Michael Thomas. Yeah, I think you're getting the better deal. Sutton's a little younger, <clears throat> isn't he? He's younger, I think, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Honestly, yeah, it's a bad time to sell him right now, but I think you can really push the name value and, potentially and yeah. the, and the ups, the potential, the potential of what can be, and that's what you mm-hmm. have to hope people are willing to risk and bet on, and go with it. All right, so my next sell, I originally had a wide receiver here. I went, I originally had Tyler Lockett, uh, and I still think he is a sell opportunity. He did just sign a bigger contract, but. I, I pivoted away from that. And I went with running back. And this one does pay me. And if you're a contender, you're probably not trading him away. <laughs> but if you're in a rebuild or kind of that middle of the road team, I'm going to try to get rid of him. And it's Joe Mixon. 
And the reason I was high on Joe Mixon at the beginning of this year, and he's always done a lot with a bad offensive line. Yeah, he's got a really good offensive line this year. But the beginning of this year, we were hearing Joe Mixon's going to be a three down back. He's going to get a lot of work. He's going to get the passing game work. We haven't seen a whole lot of that yet. He's already suffered an injury. That's kind of slowed him down. Uh-huh. And he's still running well. But it doesn't look bad. Last game, we saw a lot of Samaj P. Ryan. Mm-hmm. Before that, we saw a lot of Chris Evans. And Joe Mixon's really just turning back into that first and second down guy. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, and you hate to see <clears> it. But, yeah, I think this is a trade that you're just hoping uh, name – the name Not only that, I mean, he's still semi-producing, and like I said, this is only a sell if you're not contending right now. Right. So what we got on current trades going on? So current trades, Joe Mixon in a 23 third for a 22 second, a 22 first, and Khalil Herbert. I do it. Yeah. I mean, you're at least getting a first and a, a potentially young running back. Yeah, who was at least I think gonna. Be more involved even when Mike comes even back. Even with this, you're basically saying Joe Mixon for a first. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Joe Mixon for a 22 se- two 22 seconds and a 22 first. Yeah. Okay. Allen Robinson and Josh Jacobs for Joe Mixon. Mm-hmm. You're getting younger. You're getting a wide receiver that could land in a better spot next year for Joe Mixon. And a lot of things with trades, <laughs> man, it's just you got to have – it's all hope. It's all hope that somebody lands in the right spot where they're useful for mm-hmm. years to come. Uh, 22 first and Michael Carter for Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon for DeAndre Hopkins and a 23 third. Wow. Joe Mixon for Allen Robinson, a 22 first and a 23 second. Christian McCaffrey for Joe Mixon. You can really sell Joe Mixon. Right? Joe Mixon for a 24 first, a 23 first, and a 22 second. Holy so, I mean, if you're looking to rebuild, this great. is a great option for it. Yeah, it is. Wow. People are willing to pay up for that running back. To win the league. Yeah, especially if it's buy-in, man. <clears throat> yep. And one of the big things, and I hear this a lot, what looks like an overpay today may be an underpay tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, we've, I think we've had some funny instances in one of our leagues that we're in where it's like, yeah, I made this trade, and mm-hmm. I thought it, you know, it was like James Conner. They traded for James Conner, and they gave up, I think, Devin Singletary or... Somebody in a first for I can't Connor. remember. And it's like, now look at it. Two years later, and it's not worth anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, you, you can't you can't predict the future. No, no. And that that's the... And... That's why nobody's actually good at this game. You're just lucky. <laughs> there is some... There's... There, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a lot of luck. You can play the best matchups. I mean, Kyler Murray was projected to score 36 points this week, and he scored 16. So, it takes so much skill. I didn't personally like the matchup, but I went with it anyway, because mm-hmm. I don't have any other... Really, anybody better Well, you're not play. benching... You're not benching Kyler Murray, the number two overall QB in fantasy football this year. But... He might be number one. Like you said, you can't predict the future. And if you can make an argument for the trade, there shouldn't be any pushback on like, if the trade gets made. Oh, no. Kyle um, Murray's the number one QB, and he's number three overall in fantasy football. In the end, like, I'm a big, comp- a big pusher of, unless you can prove collusion, a trade should not be vetoed. Yeah. And... Shoot, uh, in another league I saw, somebody traded Christian McCaffrey for Zeke Elliott. No conclusion there, but people, people value players differently. Yeah, and, and like the Brandon Cooks for Juju in the <clears throat> Dynasty League. Look, like, look, man, Cooks is a one-year rental, and I'm trying to repeat. I'm not saying a one-year rental, but no, Cooks. he has a oh. shorter value than Juju. Right, and I'm trying to win the league. Now. And this was before Juju got hurt. Right, it was before Juju was hurt. And Juju, I think, offers, you know, I'm not sold on Juju. He does offer better long-term outlook. Yeah, he's a good young player. And he could get better after he leaves Pittsburgh, if he leaves Pittsburgh, or gets a new quarterback. (laughs) And we may look at this trade down the road like, okay, the Brandon Cook side was better. Or we may look at it like, oh yeah, Juju was the clear better move. Yeah, clearly. But in the end, you gotta stay fluid in these trades. Mm -hmm. You just... 
a lot of times trust your gut. That's all you can do. It's <laughs> all you can do. Like I argue a lot that you can you can play the matchups, you can you can play the numbers and you can look at all these calculators and all this other stuff, but if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. If it doesn't feel right, it's not going to make sense and you're not going to be happy with it. So do it do it what feels right. Yeah, trust your gut, man. Um and it, it all boils down to a lot of luck. <laughs> so we're going to leave you guys on that. Uh, remember, like us on Facebook, Twitter, subscribe and like on YouTube. Mm -hmm. The more you guys like, the more you guys comment, subscribe on YouTube, the yeah. more our video gets out there and helps us grow. Yeah, it helps us grow, helps us uh, open up some more free time to... to free time and upgrade to better... Equipment? Equipment, yep. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we're we're trying, and we're we're really, really. I have a busy, busy schedule with work and and marriage and all that other stuff. So I'm really squeezing these things in each day or every time we do it. But if we get a big enough following, I have no problem opening up more time. And I I think it's something we enjoy. Yeah, it's what we want to do. It's something we we like doing. So obviously, we want to do it more. But when it becomes a time constraint and it's almost like a chore rather than a hobby then <laughs> that's when it gets a little uh. yeah. but we want to keep doing it and we want to reach out and have a broader fan or fan base so comment man ask us questions share us uh share everywhere on all the social yeah. medias well we'll leave you with that we hope you liked our dynasty saturday we'll see you again on monday uh thursday and saturday and you guys have a fun time yeah enjoy the games I'm gonna play it one more time. <laughs>